We're rolling, hello. Hi guys. We're rolling. Um, today, we are, we are we're still, still here. We're stranded. Flipp Flippity do that. But it's okay, we still love you. We want to bring you content, even yeah, though we're in this hovel. The, the um, it's terrible. But we'll be back in our loft. We will, Soon. we promise. Next time. Yeah. Um, today, we're going to talk to you about a house that we don't talk about very much, but we, we've kind of talked a little bit about them, which is um, Parfum de Nicolai. Yeah. Um, the wonderful Patricia de Nicolai. So, a thing happened. So a bad thing happened. A, a fragrance that I've, I've owned and loved uh, for a while is New York um, oh, by so Parfum de Nicolai. So, this is sometimes you make a purchase and you regret it. So, I regret that I bought a 30 ml bottle of this. Why didn't I buy a 100 ml? Um, and I've, I've been really kind of keeping the last couple of drops, but it's almost run out, and so I needed to replace it. So, what do you replace it with? A 100 ml bottle. <laughs> Um, That's true love, isn't it? And I decided to go for the intense version. Um, now, those of you um, who follow Luca Turin's review may know that the original York, New York got five stars. Yes. And Luca Turin story. said of it, if I, something on the lines of if my house was burning down and I had to save any more <laughs> fragrance, it would be this. Absolutely right. Um, Not he, intense, he also gave New York intense um, five oh. stars. Um, I'm just going to also preface this slightly by saying the reason I found out about New York, well the reason, the main reason was because Joe told me about it, but it was because I loved Mouchoir de Monsieur and I wanted to find mm. other things like that. So, and I mean it's, it's a real okay. wonderful line in that, in that sort of cycle from the sort of dandified, good spray. Per, very good spray, the dandified sort of perfumes of the time. Um, the, again the sort of the old school oak moss laden, big citrus woody combos. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful lineage from those fragrances. The original of course came out in 1989. Yes, this little, which the is, New, York, New York original. Which is a survivor. And the yeah. new one, the New York Intense, is 2014. So it's been, it's been a long time if you're going to call it a flanker, which means I think there's a little bit more love behind it than people might realise. So just going touching or referencing slightly our last video in which we talked about reformulation quite a lot. So there is rumour that the original New York um, had quite a lot of um, oak moss and that yeah. had to be uh, toned down because of different regulations and the New York Intense um, people who are familiar with the original New York say the New York Intense is very close to the original New York because she's got around yeah. the, the uh, oak moss regulations by doing something else. Somehow, we don't know how. But it seems to be back to its old glory, as Luca Turin would say, and I would agree. I never smelt the original. I, I've, I've smelt the original that's currently available. Yeah. I own a bottle of that myself, and a bottle not of the a, Intense. Not a 1980s I never smelt the 1980s one. I mean, it's so beautiful. It's like it's this huge, bright citrus opening. Oranges, lemons, the bells of St. Clements is all in there. It's, I get this slightly sort of oily pettigrain thing going on as Definitely well. Definitely oily. It's, it's, not, so nice. it's not an out and out obvious in your face citrus. There's, there's roundness and depth yeah. from, from, the, from the beginning. And it's so it's radiant oily. as well. It, I mean, it really glows mm -hmm. even off the strip. It feels like it's just, it's sort of pulsating, this beautiful smell. And, and very classical. Yeah, very classical. And, and it, really it, it feels. I can't help but think of, of, of Mouchoir de Monsieur with this, no, absolutely. this kind of tonkery base with oak moss. And there are, if, I, if I, I've got the little note system in my hand, so there are also a whole, he also, uh, she also lists musk, civet, and castorium, three big animalics. Yeah. Which yeah. you would never, I don't think, describe this as an animalic fragrance, but what it has, it's got warmth and depth. It gives it depth, doesn't it? Because she's handled those animalics so well, yeah. and the way they play with the oak moss. You could so easily have someone oh. actually put these ingredients in a perfume and end up with some elements of dirtiness or funk, which we love, you know, in, in the right context. But this is not. A she's just added warmth and, and temperature. This is. Oh. Absolute elegance personified. This is, you know, dandified. Oh, it's so dandified. It's so dandified. It's, again, I can't help think, but thinking back to 1905 uh, of Guerlain and, and thinking of, you know, kind of <laughs> a Georgian era wearing an elegant, you know, all oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, outfit. But, well, but yeah. it's useful though that it feel it does also feel of its time in the 80s, mm. and even that. But it doesn't it's, feel dated. It's yeah. interesting, yeah, but it, re it kind of references this kind of like turn of the century dandified um, 
uh, era. It also has a hint of that 80s fougere power show. Yeah. But a lot of people who are new to the intense version find it very modern, very accessible, very well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've not had this new bottle very long, but the couple of times I've worn it, I've already received compliments. People yeah, same here. really like it. And it's, we've talked a bit before, there are some fragrances which you wear just you know, for ourselves, selfishly, maybe something which is animalic or loved in a meat chocolate. Yeah. There are other fragrances which are kind of uh, a smell we would like to project and would like other people to think of. I think this, well, it falls into the first category, but it definitely it falls, falls into the second category. Yeah. category. I, th I think as well that, that there's this beautiful sort of midpoint that we've that we've not touched upon between mouchoir and say um, so, let's say a precursor to this like Bois de Portugal in 1985, yeah. a midpoint of the 50s with the Chanel Paul Monsieur. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, and it's, pop, sort of, yeah. it's in it's in that line, and it's beautiful because when when this came out. They were still, they were still the big powerhouse fragrances, you know, mm. um, Antares and um, Polo Green in the seventies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were big powerhouses. This is a, this is a powerhouse, but done with elegance rather yep. than, than punch. Yeah, this has the confidence to just sit back a little bit. Yeah, and do you get a sort of slightly gourmand edge to this? A slightly sort of a beautiful warm pastry thing or something. I, I know what, oh, maybe I'm just really pie kind of yeah. like thing a little bit, just a hint of it. It keeps you guessing. I love it. I just get waves of just so Sometimes wonderful. the oak moss feels really, really bitter and rich. Sometimes yeah. I think it's much more uh, bright fragrant. Sometimes I, th I think it's cuddly. It, it sort of responds to your mood. I mean, I think your, your own body, your own mm. body temperature, the weather. It's a really responsive fragrance in that regard. And I think there are, there are a few fragrances around, which, you know, could, I don't think you could someone young, you know, kind of, I don't think it's quite a teenager fragrance, but someone, you know, early 20s could get away with it. Yeah, As yeah. could, you know, an older, you know, 60, 70 something. Absolutely. In, in, in a suit, I could pull it off equally. And again, I, you know, we, we both, I think, long for a signature scent that, you know, is the holy grail. But again, I, I could imagine that being my thing. This is, you know, if, if, if there was one. So we, we also, as well as this fragrance, we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, Patricia de Leclerc. So if you're, if you follow yes. our, um, yeah, our channel at all and followed us on in, in Instagram, you will know of our our love, um, real love for the House of Gerland. Huge love of Gerland. But you might also know that we lament what's happened to it, it was, uh, since it was taken over by LVMH yeah. uh, a, a while ago. So a large cosmetics company. Yeah. Um, and I don't think it's done, I don't think Gerland has produced a really great fragrance in 20 years or so. No, um, it's a real shame, isn't it? It's a particular shame. Um, so Thierry Vassa, who's at the head of Guerlain at the moment, I'm sure he's a very, very fine perfumer, but there are very fine perfumers and then there's Guerlain. And I don't yeah. think he quite... He's not, he's not of, that, of that league. And in fact, the one, thing that, the one thing that's interesting here is that Patricia de Nicolai is the... Natural heir. She's the natural heir to the Guerlain legacy. She's the great granddaughter of... Pierre, I was going to say Pierre Cardin, I don't know. No. Pierre, Pierre Gala and the niece of Jean Paul Gala. And when the time came for her to sort of assume the mantle, um, she was never allowed as a no, woman. Because she was a woman. And which is absolutely insane. And they lost, they lost a real genius there who yeah. had inherited all of that. And so, rightly so, she struck out on her own. Yeah. And, started this and the fragrances. Her. That she's produced you know, in the last 20 years from from, from New York onwards are so much better than Gerlain. Yeah. Oh my God. But but yet this is this, so this fragrance is Gerlain through and yeah. through, uh, and some of the other fragrances, patchouli intense, neroli intense, yeah, queer, odalisk. There was there was just one that was um, eau de Nicolai for a while, which was mm. beautiful. But they've got this this kind of uh, really this complex. Beautiful Gerland DNA, um, which kind of sings at the heart of everything, and has this body, this kind of floral, uh, bergamotty, tonkery complexity in, in the middle of it. It seems to go through, but the, their ingredients are of such quality. Um, they some they somehow feel quintessentially French, quintessentially Provencal, yeah, and they feel classic and yet modern and wearable. Well, that's the other thing. They they are they are really French. There is that that bouquet garni of yeah. Of, of herbs and things in there. It's, it's so it's so 
sort of connected to the, to the roots and to the to the, the ground of the soil of France. Yeah. It makes me... So unapologetic. It's, it's difficult because on one hand, you know, I'm happy to have this fragrance and I'm happy that, you know, she's doing really great things. I think patchouli intense is one which might be on my to-buy list. Yeah. Really um, great. Very bright patchouli. It's like, really long-lasting. Um, and it, but it's just it's a shame what's happening to Carolina Foam because a house that we love is pretty, pretty poor. Well, you know... If you go to the Patricia de Nicolai shop down in, in Fulham, it's just this tiny little sort of cubby hole, it's beautiful. And you're not going to see a photo of Angelina Jolie on the wall. Yep. You're not going to find that half of their fragrances are, are unknown by the staff. You know, you go to the girl encounter sometimes and say, oh, do you have, do you have um, La Bleu? Do you have Nahima? Do you yep. have... Well, well, what's that? I've got this one here, and they're, and they're pushing the latest, the latest flanker of a million flankers that they've suddenly made. Because they've got lazy. Or yeah, with oh. pink spots or something. It's so dumb. That's not the company that made Shalimar and Tiki yep. and Mitsuko. It's not the same company. Whereas I, I, I just, I just think producer the Nicolas is the obvious heir, and she's doing great things. Yeah. And I can't wait to see. She what she she's done some things at MDCI as well. She has done things at other. Yeah, we need to check yeah, that out. Yeah, other companies. But so yeah, it's especially a beautiful fragrance. so let us know if you've got any other producer de Nicolai favourites, especially if you've tried the MDCI fragrances or fragrances. Yeah, that absolutely. Um, and but, try them if you haven't, because you're, I mean, you're in for a treat. Yeah. But I think uh, New York in terms has got a lot of love since yeah. the Luca Turin book and people may not have heard from it before, but it's got a great deal of heritage um, yeah. about it. So, and it's so, it's so well designed. You can just smell it all day. You yeah. can smell it all day. You can wear it all day. You can wear it smart, it brings a smart casual, face, huh? perfect, all day long. Great, great. 10 out of 10. Like Marilyn Monroe, you could go to bed just wearing this. Yes. And it'd be great. And you have clothes if you want. Yeah, sure. But I'll wear it. But, uh -huh. until next time, happy sniffing! Bye.